What's up, YouTube? It's Wesley with the Do-It-Yourself Mushroom Enthusiasts. As promised, today I'm going to be making my automated shotgun fruiting chamber, and I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do it so that you guys can do it at home as well. Now here I just have a 112 quart uh, clear plastic tote that was my previous shotgun fruiting chamber. It just wasn't an automated one. Had about two to three inches of perlite in the bottom and I would just mist it daily. Still gonna put some perlite in the bottom. I don't think it's really that necessary since I'll have a automated uh, humidif uh, humidistat. So it'll automatically humidify in here with a humidifier if the humidity drops below a certain point. But I'm still gonna have it anyways just to make sure if power goes out or anything that there is still good humidity in here. So I am still going to put two to three inches of perlite um, on the plastic uh, plastic tote here. There's a line that goes all the way around right about here that I just pretty much kind of go off of. Sometimes I might go a little below that or just right to it, but never really above it. Um, but yeah, so we are going to add a computer fan that will be on a timer as well. And that'll maintain fresh air exchange. And then the humidistat will be set to um, maintain 95% humidity, but it won't turn back on until it drops to about 75%, 80% as actually what I'm gonna set it to. Um, so it'll have that fluctuation as well with humidity and fresh air exchange. So with all that being said, we're gonna get right to it. All right, everyone, just give you an idea of what we're working with here. Um, we got the computer fan and a cycle timer on the right side that will control our fresh air exchange. And then over here on the left side in these other two boxes, I got a humidity controller. Um, I said humidistat before, but I meant a humidity controller. And then I have a reptile terrarium humidifier. So I will control the humidity with that and the humidity controller. And then I will control fresh air exchange with the fan and the cycle timer. And I will be attaching all of this to the clear tote for fruiting conditions. And I actually have a bag that is like just about ready to fruit. So I'm going to do this today because I don't want to wait too much longer before I put it in fruiting conditions. And I will test it for a couple days. And then when I feel like it's good to go, then I will put everything in fruiting conditions. And All right, I add so first things in. first, I have some safety glasses here and a face mask um, because I'm going to be using a Dremel to cut out my hole for my fan. Um, ideally, you would use a hole saw, but I just don't feel like going to the store to grab the size that I need. Um, typically, I don't work with anything less than three inch for a hole saw. I mean, more than three inch for a hole saw, and it would require a four and a half for this. And I just decided to go with the Dremel. But sometimes, if you decide to go this route, the plastic will fly up and hit you in the face. So, definitely have some safety glasses. And I recommend a mask too because the pieces of plastic hitting you on the cheek or whatever don't really feel too pleasant. Um, this one doesn't cover my whole face, but it'll do good enough. So I have my fan, and I know that I don't go above my line on my with my perlite that is on my tote. So I'm going to put it just about an inch above that. And then I'm going to make my marks with my marker again. I'm just going to follow the inside as best as I can with my marker. So I know where to cut. You do want to be pretty accurate with this as you don't want the hole to be too big. Perfect. So there you can see my plastic bin line that I go off of. I went about an inch above that and just marked right inside the fan. Tried to center it as good as I could as well. And yeah, 
I'm going to cut out right inside of the line, not the outside or on the line, but right inside the line. And that will keep it to the right size to not be too big for the fan to where there will be exposed holes out here that you will see when mounting the fan. All right, so I got my little Dremel tool here all set up with a little cutting wheel on it. So I am going to get straight to it. It's all cut out. So I say cut out, but it kind of like more or less melts it out. So, you know, to be kind of still stuck in there a little bit, melted together. You'll know that all these plastic burrs is going to be on here still. So what I do is I come back through with a steak knife, which I'll show in just a second. And I clean up this side and the inside and get all that off of there. But you can see how I cut just inside of the line. I didn't cut on the line and I didn't cut outside of the line. That is to make sure, which we can kind of draft it real quick, that we're not gonna have any exposed edges outside of the fan that could cause any damage. And you can see it fits right to just perfect. I mean, maybe a little bit of adjustment, right one way or the other, but I mean, it's just about perfect. So, you know, after I drill the holes for these to for the screws, and uh, yeah, that is the fan so far. So, um, we're gonna keep moving on. So, I've got me a nice, sharp little knife. It's actually a paring knife, not a steak knife, but it will work just fine. And I'm gonna cut the burrs out. Clean that plastic up good. And you really don't gotta like cut at it so much as just kinda get it loose and free. It will come off pretty easily.
pretty smooth. Once we get the other side, then the inside finish up some more and then it should be pretty good. What is that? Alright, so now I got the hole pretty clean for the most part. Um, camera shows a little bit more than what you actually see. Not a big deal though. So now what I'm going to do is grab my Sharpie. See if I can find it. And I'm going to place the fan right over the hole where I want it. And then I'll mark on the inside of the tub where I'm going to have my mounting screws at. And then I'm going to make those holes. All right, so I just double checked that my holes are all lined up and they are and that is where they will fall So I'm gonna mark or I mean take my Dremel and just Make a few little holes about the same size as these Now ideally you would use a drill like I did when I made my shotgun fruiting chamber But I left it at work. So I'm just going to work with what I have um, you can be very innovative and figure out your own ways if you don't have a drill or a Dremel. I know some people that just have used razor knives and just cut through it slowly with those. So, I mean, there's many different ways you can do this. Just work with what you got. You don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money. But here we go. We're going to drill out those holes and mount this fan. And that will be that. And then we will decide where we're going to put the humidifier and run a hole for that. And that will pretty much be it from there. It will be just plug and play. Here we go. All right, so I have a fine tip Dremel bit here. Just going to screw it on my Dremel. Make sure you push the button, finger tight. Nice and good. All right. We are good to go. Same thing, I'm going to wear a mask so I don't get any plastic pieces to the face. Always better to be safe. We'll get these little burrs off of here as well. I mean, that almost did just as good of a hole as my drill did. Just a little bit smaller, which is perfect because we don't want it to be too big for the little mounting bolt and nut. The small burrs you can usually just remove them from your hand. that so now I'm gonna plug in the fan and figure out which one it blows all right so now I know when it blows out this is where it blows out from so I'm gonna make sure that's facing outside of the box line up the holes which are perfect I have a fan guard here, so I'm going to put that on there. Actually, I have that. 
luckily, it's perfectly square, so you can kind of flip it how you want it. Uh, that whole size was perfect. In the other corner, on the opposite side. Just to make sure you're mounting it square. And there you have it, there's the fan mounted. Now I'll get a Phillips head screwdriver and a little adjustable wrench and tighten these up a little bit tighter. And then we'll start figuring out our humidifier placement. All right, so we've gone ahead and tightened up all our screws and bolts and removed our humidifier from the packaging. The humidifier is pretty simple, just the humidifier itself and then the hose to run it to where we want it to go. So I'm going to do the same thing with, as I did before, I'm just going to mark where I want it to go and then I'm going to use my thermal tool to cut it out and remove all the burrs. So ideally you don't want this water to pool up in this, you want it to just have even flow out or if it does get water build up for it to drain right back in. So the idea is to Oops. Yeah, it says when using please keep the outlet pipe straight. U-shaped bins may cause the pipe to accumulate water and no fog.
like something like that will work great. Like I said, you want to keep it as straight as possible. side of it. And I think I might use that same tool I did before. Instead of the cutting wheel since it's such a small hole. Too small or too big when you're doing this kind of thing. That is definitely not what she said though. And voila, that is it. Now you just plug it into your controllers and plug and play depending on your environment. All right, everyone, I got everything hooked up to my tub now. So my humidity controller is there. And then the fan is down there. And I have the uh, humidifier there. I don't use distilled water only like I did when I first started. It's just still written on there. Um, I actually find that tap water works great and has a little bit of chlorine so sometimes it will help kill off any um, contamination. So I just use tap water now even though that says distilled water only. I do use distilled water for syringes still though. 
And then down below, I have my incubating chamber or spawn box. But I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a lowdown on what I got going on over here. So this thing is set to 95, but as soon as it drops below 80, it will start kicking on the humidifier again. And then the fan is set to run for 10 seconds every 20 minutes to give the fresh air exchange. So it just dropped below 80. There goes the humidifier. I've been uh, playing with it for a couple days. The 10 seconds every 20 minutes seems to allow it to not get below 80% humidity, which you don't want it to when growing mushrooms, especially um, most like tropical type mushrooms. So that will fill back up to 95%. And then as the fog settles low, the lower humidity will actually increase a little bit and then it will slowly dissipate and as soon as it gets down to 80% again, the humidistat will kick on for the humidifier and rehumidify the tub. I still have holes in there from the last time I used it as just a regular shotgun fruiting chamber. So it will draw fresh air in when the fan blows it out. It will blow out the CO2, bring fresh air in, and maintain humidity. And that is my automated fruiting chamber. Now you may have to adjust your adjustments as needed for your environment if you live in a more humid environment or a more dry environment and so on. But I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time this is Wesley with the do-it-yourself mushroom enthusiasts. Have a wonderful day.